All right, today uh, we're working on Andrew's mini bike, and I think this is a perfect opportunity to go over uh, reading spark plugs or reading spark plugs to the best of my ability anyway, because I get this phone call about five times a week, and I think a video would just explain a whole lot. So stay tuned, and we're going to get into the whole deal. All right, so what we got here is we put a fresh, so Andrew's hot rodding on his little mini bike and he's done put him a, a souped up, four, what is it, 22 millimeter? 22 millimeter carburetor on it. And uh, it's some generic Chinese stuff, but, but, but it runs good, but it's lean. So we, we went down to O'Reilly's and got uh, a box of fresh plugs so we could do some testing this morning. And so we, a, a, a super common misconception that, that everybody, that or not everybody, right? But a lot of people get, is they're trying to read a spark plug from here. So they're looking at the porcelain and I don't know what gauge or, or visual they're looking at, but they're trying to read the spark plug from down here. So that's absolutely useless. So what we do is we cut the spark plug apart and then th this is, you're going to see some more in a minute because we're fixing to fix this problem. But <clears throat> so if you see this ring, I say line all the time, and, and, and it really I shouldn't say line, because when I say fuel line, people think about fuel hose. But we're talking about this line right here, right? So this jetting for this carburetor is super lean. It is super duper lean. So we should be about right here, but we are way up here. So it's like way lean. And so we're going to do some, some jet changes here and we're going to try to end up about right here. All right, so that's how we tell if we rich or lean. We want to be, give or take, I mean, some motors are, are a little different, but this is, everything I'm saying is just like baseline rule of thumb. This is not for your specific application. But we try to keep the fuel line, you know, in this one to here, eighth inch, three sixteenths from this ledge, right? All right. So that's that's what we're looking for on fuel. All right. Here. So this is the ground strap, and 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 what you'll see, like if you had really really low timing, what this is showing us is the heat in the chamber. And as the timing increases, you have more heat in the chamber. So you can see right, I hope you can see right there. You can see right there, that's where the line ends. So that is our timing line. So if we lowered the timing or took heat out of the chamber, that line would move this way. It would move out here. And then the more heat we put in the chamber, the further it's going to come down. I like to run the heat line and where I generally find the motor is the happiest is when this line is pretty much touching the body of the plug. Some stuff you can actually get it to, to just, and, and as time goes, this, this is one pass on this plug. So it didn't have time to get any black on this face. But generally, you can run the timing till it cleans this face off. But for sure, safe is, you know, about the end of the ground strap where it hits the body. And, and it's a little more on these little air cool jobs. It's a little more aggravating because you don't have a distributor, but we can put a keyway in the flywheel. But once we get the, the fuel worked out, then, then we'll work on the, the flywheel keyway. And, and try to pull this timing on down <clears throat> a little bit and, and put a little more heat in the chamber. So what we have concluded is, so I have a, a couple of things here that you may or may not need, may or may not know what they are. So I'm just gonna just, just lay them out. 
So <clears throat> this is a pin gauge set, and especially like on Hollies, and again, we're working on a mini bike, but this stuff translates, it all translates. So when we're working on like a uh, emulsion bleeds or air bleeds on like a Holly, you know, uh, a 4150 style or a 4500 style, whatever you, you know, especially adjustable stuff and especially stuff that people's been messing with. Cause just cause, you know, the air bleed is stamped, you know, 23 or 30, or whatever, doesn't mean that's what size it is. So I always pin gauge everything to make sure that we can confirm nobody's drilled anything and you know because it's hard to re-stamp that stuff um what did i say it was a 36. so we take a 36 gauge pin and that's a little small that's a 37 yeah maybe it was 38. nope it's a 37. so a 38 won't go in that jet but a 37 wheel and, it, and it's pretty tight. I mean, like it, it won't just fall through, right? So we know that the jet hole and there's no, that I can see there's no markings on this jet. And some of these little Wong Fu carburetors will come with a couple extra jets, but this one did not. So what we're gonna do is this, these, are called pin vices. So that is what you use to hold these really small drill bits. And generally speaking, we drill them by hand, but you can put this in a, a drill motor and, and use it that way. But generally speaking, you know, we can drill this old brass by, by hand. And so we are 30, what we say, 37. So we're 37 thousandths right now. And this drill bit is 41. So we're gonna go from 37 to 41. That's a that's a pretty big jump, uh, especially as small as the you know if it was a 80 and we were going up four thousandths, it wouldn't be no big deal. But going here four thousandths, that, that's a lot. But it is super lean. So I think that I think we're gonna be okay. Uh, but if we ain't, we'll, uh, we'll we'll do something different. But some of this stuff is. Yeah, it may not drill by hand. Let me get the, well, let me get it tight first. That gummy time. Yeah, let me get a drill, hang loose. Some are better than others, but. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get some pliers. And then two, we've got a, another thing on these because it's a slide carburetor. Some people know what a slide carburetor is, some people don't. So this thing is a slide carburetor. It's got a needle that goes down in the main jet like a quadra jet does, a meter and rod. And the meter and rod has adjustments, right? So once we drill this, hopefully we'll get it big enough that we can go, because we've got the meter and rod pulled all the way up and it's still this lean. So once we drill this, now if we need to, we've got like five grooves that we can let the meter and rod back down to, to tune the jetting if this is too much. And just like that. All right, so we'll check and confirm where that's at. So that's a 41. Woo, that's a 42. Yep. So it's a 42. So we went from 38, is that right? 38? 37 to 42. So that's 5,000. So, so we moved the jet size 5,000. So I, I don't think that's going to be a problem. I think that's where we're going to end up where we want to be. Um, but you can buy, and again, I, I have to use this junk all the time, like working on Hollies with air bleeds and stuff. Uh, you can buy these, um, so we call them number, they make drill bits in numbers, letters, and fractions. So you can buy these uh, 
a numbered wire, they, they wire size or wire gauge. And this is the set that I use the most of. But I've got some smaller sets that's only about this big that go down to just, I mean, super duper small. So we will get this carburetor put back together and we'll get it popped back on the bike. He's going to make another pass and then we will pull that plug and then we'll look at it and then we'll talk about where we're at and if we need to, to do some more adjusting. So hang loose, we'll be right back. <clears throat> All right, so Andrew made another test pass and it's definitely way better. So what, what was it doing the first time? How fast? 52. So it would go 52 with, with the original jetting and then this pass with the jet five thousandths larger, it went how fast? 61, 61 miles an hour. So c come over here close and let's just compare. So on this one, <clears throat> you can see the fuel ring is really faint. And then on this one, the fuel ring is really pronounced, but it's still about in the same place, but it's just much more pronounced. And then over here, <clears throat> you can see the fuel, I mean, the, the heat line is really distinct and dark. And over here on this one, the fuel line, I mean, the, the heat line, I can still see it in the same place, but it's not dark like it is on that one. So, I mean, that's, that's what 5,000s did. We don't have any more spark plugs. Andrew's gonna have to run down to the parts store and see if he can get a couple more spark plugs. Because this the, the fuel the fuel line is so far fuel ring whatever is so far up in the plug you just I mean you just can't see it without cutting it apart so uh, we'll we'll run to the parts store and we're gonna pop the carb off and probably man I, I guess we're gonna go another four or five thousandths and just see what that does and then we'll just we'll keep going till it till it doesn't get better and we'll we'll show the plug every time so all right hang loose we'll get another plug all right so the parts store didn't have no more plugs so we got some in today this is monday this monday it is monday so we got some in today so andrew just pulled the main jet back out and we were 43 thousandths so this time we're going to just bump it on up to 50 because it's still red way lean. So we're going to bump it up to 50 and hope that's not too far. But again, so we're going to bump, if it is too big, we can just let the metering rod down. So we still got some adjustability. So I got a 50 thousandths, which is a number, a number 55 drill bit is 50 thousandths. So we are going to. And we'll gauge, pin it just to see where, because it's probably, you know, a little oversized, but we'll, we'll check it. Yep, so a 52 won't go in, but a 51 will go. So we're going to, we're going to try that. And uh, Andrew will go make a pass and we'll see what happens. Stay tuned.
back tire. Oh. I can see what you use like lady plane. So now we are making some headway. So uh, this last jet change got it off of that upper portion and actually down on to the to the main section where it should be. It's still lean, but we are 110 percent headed to the right direction. So come on in here and let's and let's look at it. So. Let me get something to point with because people don't like me using my fingers for some reason. All right, so on this plug and this plug, you can see that we're all the way up here on this upper portion. The, the fuel ring should be down here, right? So we are all the way up on this, on this upper section of the porcelain. But here on this, now we had to change, it's still made the same way and it's, and it's a direct crossover but this is an auto light plug and these are NGKs. They were out of these and we're gonna have any more to tomorrow. So we went up that uh, to from whatever, what were we, 43? I think we were 43 thousandths and we went up to like 51 or 52 thousandths. So um, you can see that we're, we're, we're right here in the radius where it transitions. So I'd still say where we at right now, we need another five or seven thousandths to get there. But I think one more time is going to get it done because we need to be probably an eighth inch lower than we are now. And if we look, I don't. It's still hot because we just took it out. So yeah, I, I mean it's hard to see, and I ain't got my glasses. It's hard to see. But the heat the, the heat line looks different on this plug and the ground strap is made a little different on this plug compared you can see how much narrower it is, but I still see the line relatively in the same place. So I mean, the, the heat looks pretty good. I mean, I still think we can put a few degrees of timing in it, but the timing looks relatively good. It's just, you know, our, our, our fuel ring is still just way lean. So we're going <clears> to, <throat> we're going to pop the main jet out of it again and we'll be right back. All right. So this time we're going from a number 55 drill to a number 54 drill, which is a larger, you know, wire diameter goes engages you know right so a one gauge is bigger than a hundred gauge right so this is like 50 55 56 thousandths is what it measures so we'll check it with some gear uh oh it will 55 yep, 55 is it will go in but it's tight So, yeah, 56 won't go. So we at 55 thousandths right there. And I think we started out at, God, Ray, we started out at like 30 something and we still, we still lean. So it's crazy how, you know, how far off that carburetor was. Cause you know, carburetors are self metering. So for them to have it that far off, I, you know, I can see a three, four, five thousandths, but that far, that's a lot, man. They they, uh, they definitely missed the calibration on that one. Um, all right, he gonna chunk this one in and we'll put a new plug in, make another pass, and we'll be right back.
What? Go a little bit faster. Thing don't tell you. It hasn't been on this one. It lowered. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's oil everywhere. Yeah. We gotta fix that before we make another one. I don't think we're going Alright, so this is the last one I my daggum part off tool caught and it, it cracked the plug, but you, you can still see it, but it cracked it. So here we are. Let me turn it this way. So it's way up here in the radius on this one. And then on this one, and again, this is where I broke it. <laughs> it, it. It snapped off right there. But you can see it's down. So it could still, it's still a little bit lean, but it's not bad. But it's definitely down on the, the area of the porcelain that it should be on. And like I say, I like to see, you know, from this ledge right here, you know, I like to see about, I mean, it just depends on what the motor likes, a eighth inch to three sixteenths, give or take, usually in that window is, is where it wants to be. And this one is about right there. I mean, it's about 150 down to, to the bottom of it. So, and the heat still looks good. What we'll do is so, is so much, and again, you know, this is just how plugs are. You can read the heat on these plugs the way the ground strap's made much easier than you can on these plugs. It looks totally different. So we're gonna get some more of these and we're gonna call the jetting good for now. And then we'll get some uh, adjustable keyways for the flywheel where we can move the timing. And then we'll we'll look at some some timing lines and just do a comparison there but hopefully you know from from here to here this will melt pistons and this will live forever so hopefully you can distinguish between those two i hate i broke that it just kills me because it, it, it ain't as pronounced I almost want to do another one and make another pass so so you can but like I say, I mean you can see where it's at. I hope you can. I mean it's it's the the line is right there and I think it translates on film. I sure hope it does. But uh, again, you know, th this one right here will hurt parts and this right here won't hurt parts. So hopefully you can see this progression uh you know, and, and it'll make sense, but I just, like I say, I got, I get calls all the time about this and it's hard on the telephone to explain this to people. It's just so much easier with a visual and a lot of people are visual learners. I'm a visual learner. And uh, so this, this just makes sense to me. And it's a lot easier to do this than it is to try to explain it. So I hope that that, and again, this is not an exhaustive, all fuel in-depth spark plug reading how-to. This is spark plug reading 101. And, <clears throat> you know, pretty much this will hold true for gas, race gas, uh, pump gas. You know, when you get into alcohol, it, it's, it's a little more tricky. Some of the uh oxygenated fuels are a little uh, yeah, tricky can be but for just normal stuff this right here is pretty much uh, uh the golden rule so i hope that helps uh and uh no andrews were hurt in the filming of this video <laughs> so uh all right uh leave me some uh, notes in the comment let me know what you think and we'll see you on the next one